always remember, I never one time in my years playing here ever in a huddle, locker room, or in practice ever remember thinking of losing. You know, and that's strange, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing element of what this place is. Seeing the level of basketball that was starting to be known here in Bartlesville, you started feeling that. It wasn't a pressure, it was an expectation, you know, and so that is where it felt for us that we can't let the city down anymore, and we can't let the players down, we can't let the fans down because this is what they expect. The 1989 Untouchables Bruins boys basketball team delivered Bartlesville its second state title 22 years after the 1967 state champion College High Wildcats. Going into that senior season, we were ranked preseason number one coming in, and we went down to, uh, down to Phillips Petroleum down there on the steps and we made a poster called The Untouchables, and we all dressed up in gangster outfits, you know, and we looked like we were there all the time. And that right there still sticks out in my head as one of the most memorable for me, you know, at the beginning going, you know, seeing us up there standing just going, we're going to be good this year. We're going to be really good. I mean, 89, 88 and 89 team was preseason number one. They should have been coming out of the finals. So, and you had a great group of, of seniors, you know, that were special. I just remember how good practices were. I mean, it was so competitive. You know, you're going up against Ron Johnson, Michael Silas, Pettiford, all those guys. It's a, you're having to grow up pretty quick. You know, we'd be practicing out here and seven of us would be bleeding. You know what I mean? Because neither, none of us wanted to lose. None of, I mean, it was a competitive spirit around here that I still have never been around. The season opening home game, filled to capacity with loyal Bruin fans, ended up an upset victory for Sepulpa and set the Bruin team on a roller coaster ride. Coming into that first game, we were preseason ranked number one on this floor, and we played Sepulpa, right, which at that time was not a doormat, but we know it, it was, we were excited to play Sepulpa at home for the first game, right? We came out, turned the lights off, did We Will Rock You had our pants sagging, had nine wristbands on, headbands. We thought we were just the coolest, right? But we got beat by 12. <laughs> and uh, never ever will I forget this either. Ron and I, our whole team walking into the locker room and we sat down and you know, we were all just couldn't believe it, you know, just down, upset, hollering at each other. And Coach Hester came in and he sat down and he said, all right, fellas, we tried it your way. Now we're going to try it my way. You know, I remember Hess was mad, but it was, but it was, we weren't, it wasn't our whole team. It was a different starting lineup completely than probably what he thought it was going to be at the beginning of the year. After a 7-5 and five start and an opening round loss to Class 3A Hugo in the Tournament of Champions, it was time for some Bruin magic. With some hard work, a swarming defense, and gritty determination, the revitalized Bruins ended with a 17-6 regular season record and a number two state ranking. Well, when we got to the semifinals and we played Tulsa Memorial, it was the hardest game we've ever played. We were down, I believe, five, close to a minute and a half left in that game. And Coach Chester called a timeout and he, didn't, he sat down, he didn't say a word. And Ron, I, Mike, Miller, I mean, we all went after it, you know, screaming, you know, just, you know, just, it was, it was intense. I don't know how we won. I always think back of it. You know, we were down six with, I remember at least two minutes left, and then Ron made some big plays to tie it up. And then I remember Mike Silas hit a shot that gave us a lead. I always remember that. And I don't, and I still don't, to this day, I don't know how we won, you know, but it, it was, it was, that's part of it. I mean, that was part of that Bruin magic. Then the state championship game against Westmore. Going up there, driving up there in the bus, um, we couldn't go faster than 10 miles an hour on I-75 because the whole city was going to Tulsa and it, both lanes were packed. You can put the success we had in that time frame as Barsville Bruins hand in hand with the Brew Crew. There's nothing like it. And I, another memory of mine that I'll never forget is Mark, uh, Michael and Ron and I going out to meet their players. They had their three captains as well come out and you meet with the referees out there and I'll never forget those kids were sitting out there while the guy, the ref is telling, you know, saying this is what you got to do and we're never going to pay attention to the refs. Ron and I and, and Mike and Miller are just staring at those kids, you know, just staring at them and they literally were 
you know, like shaking, going go to the ref, going, yes, sir, y y yes, sir, yes, sir, you know, like that. And we were just staring at him right there. And when they shook hands with us, Ron grabbed him and looked at him and goes, we're going to beat you by 50, you know? And we walked back and when we were walking back, we looked at each other and it was just a confidence that we had. We were like, we are going to kill them. The 1989 Bruins ended with a 23-6 record, including nine straight victories and winning 16 of their last 17 games. There is only one reason that we were champions, and that's because of Coach Steve Hester, you know, and he was hard, and he was a hard coach to play for, but he was a fair coach to play for, and he knew what he was talking about. Ray Schaefer and Rod Berger, those guys were awesome. They worked well together because they weren't all the three the same. They all three had very, very different, different characteristics, but they were all three very important to the success of our whole team. You know, there's a lot of great teams then, whether it's Jinx or Owasso was good. Stillwater was really good at that time. But I think a lot of people, if you were asked to play a true serum, where they would like to play high school ball from 1988, 87, you know, from where coach first got here with Skrzynski and Darren Hall and those guys. Where that was when Ron was a freshman, that really started it. And you ask a lot of people, they'd say, man, that'd be the best place to play high school basketball because of, of the fans and all the energy we had. Please welcome the 1989 Bruin Boys basketball team, the Untouchables.